Teamwork makes the dream work. Do you believe in that? It also happens in the animal kingdom. Those blood sucker fish, exclusive sucker birds, and elusive drongos. Mother Nature must be proud. Or maybe not. In today's video, I'll show you the most thought-provoking animal teamworks that made history over the years to survive. Go grab your snacks as we dive right into the video. Welcome to Animals Wild TV. No bus fare? No problem. Why do you think remoras are always clinging to sharks? These clingy fish are hitching a ride with a bus-sized shark for free. Going where? Well, I don't know. Remoras, aka suckerfish. It's super strange that their front dorsal fins have evolved to act like a suction cup that sits on the top of their heads. This lets remoras attach to the undersides of passing manta rays and sharks. Once attached, remoras feed on parasites as well as pieces of any prey items that the shark may miss. This behavior keeps the sharks clean and keeps them safe from any bacterial infections or unhealthy organisms from growing on the shark. I love how they are all together and how the little remoras are not afraid of the shark. They even go in and out of the shark's mouth, which says how much they trust the shark. Now it's pretty clear, these two fish have feelings for each other. Mm, give us a kiss. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Can I hitch a ride, man? This is what some sea anemones say to certain crab species in the ocean. Sea anemones will hitchhike on the backs of hermit crabs, providing the anemones with a lift over the seabed. While getting a ride, the anemones use their tentacles to grab leftovers from the hermit crab's meals. But what does the crab get out of this relationship? The sea anemone protects the hermit crab from hungry octopuses. With the barbed tentacles of the sea anemone on the crab's back, the crab becomes a bit less tasty to predators. Furthermore, crabs help fend off creatures in the mood for a sea anemone snack. Interestingly, this relationship doesn't happen by accident. Crabs will intentionally seek out anemones to place on their backs. In fact, when the hermit crab changes shells, it'll poke the anemones with its pincers and reattach them to its back. Boxer crabs also engage in this with sea anemones, but their relationship is an especially interesting one. That crustacean has a cool habit of wearing pom-pom boxing gloves. Yes, they use tiny sea anemones as hand gloves. They pick small anemones with their claws and keep these for defense and offense, and the anemones can eat the extra food particles they mop up around the crab's home. It's a win-win game. Going back on dry land, let's take a closer look at the strange slash strategic alliance of coyotes and badgers. Coyotes prefer open habitats to hunt and kill their prey because speed is their primary predatory strategy. Badgers, on the other hand, are diggers who catch their prey while resting in their underground burrows. When coyotes and badgers work together, they combine their specific hunting skills to increase the likelihood of catching prey. Yep, you heard that right. Coyotes and badgers work together. How does this arrangement work? Well, the larger coyote chases prey on the prairie or grassland. The badger, however, hides in the burrows of prey such as ground squirrels or prairie dogs to grab them as they return home. So, the coyote gets the prey if it tries to escape above ground, and the badger snatches the prey if it tries to hide underground. Next time you're out on a hike, look for these two guys hanging out with each other. Grabbing a drink, shooting the breeze. Heading back to the African savanna, scientists in Uganda have witnessed a strange friendship between warthogs and mongooses. Warthogs have learned to rid themselves of annoying ticks by seeking out the grooming services of some accommodating neighbors. Guess who? A group of mongoose is looking for a snack. The mongoose cleaning crew have learned to inspect the wild pigs for ticks, going so far as to climb on top of their customers to gain access to more parasites. The warthogs are given grooming, while the sharp-toothed mongooses pick off insects and especially ticks. Also in some instances, numerous mongooses will nibble at the warthog's tough skin, even crawling on top of the pig. The mongoose gets a meal and the warthog gets clean. Now that's a win-win contract. Next up, if you've ever kept a tarantula as a pet, you know that while these animals can be fierce predators, they are also a bit dramatic at times. Tarantulas molt fairly regularly until adulthood, and directly after a molt, their bodies are soft and at risk of damage from insects like ants. Lesser backed tarantulas in Colombia have found a solution to this problem by keeping little frogs in their burrows. The dotted humming frog eats ants and other small insects, which protects the tarantula and its eggs from predators. What's super cool about their relationship is that these tarantulas are known to feed on other frog species. 
They'll often grab a frog and look it over. If it's a dotted humming frog, they'll place it in their burrow and keep it. If it's a different species, they'll eat it. It's one of the most perfect, if not bizarre, relationships. Oxpeckers and large African animals like the black rhinoceros have historically been documented as one of the best relationships. It's thought that the oxpeckers remove ticks and other parasitic bugs from the large mammals. They also can often alert the animals to threats of predation by flying upwards and making lots of noise. Well, some believe they're actually a vampire bird. While the oxpeckers do eat ticks and parasites from big mammals, they also feed on the blood of their host animals, sucking the blood out from the open wounds that ticks have scraped. This was once thought to be anecdotal to help prevent infections from mammals, but now it's pretty clear the birds are bloodsuckers and not healers. Yes, that is a beautiful shade of red. I want to suck your blood. However, cows and oxpeckers have a more subtle relationship than that of the rhino and the oxpecker. Speaking of ticks and some of the insects that stick to the animal's body, the cow is not excluded. In fact, they are popularly targeting the cattle's population. Ticks will make the life of a cow miserable. Can you imagine how? If they stay longer in the cow's body, they'll get the cow sick, lose its weight, unable to produce a lot of cow's milk and can't even reproduce its offspring. Now the bloodsucker bird is a hero. Having their own personal tick brigade helps the cows immensely because the only defense the cows naturally have against these bugs is their small tails. So the oxpeckers are a very welcome aid and the most reliable help they could have. Oxpeckers consume anything small, so ticks are one of those small things they can have an all-out buffet on as long as they stick to their friend's body. If you think oxpeckers are the best, you better not, because the next on the list already made an incredible history. Crocodiles in Africa have a unique relationship with plovers, and it's already been proven a decade or more ago. Plovers are the only animal that a crocodile can get along with. After having a party all day, a crocodile will walk onto the riverbank, find a cozy spot, and sit with its mouth wide open like it never happened. This action signals the little bird to enter the crocodile's mouth to pick off tiny bits of food that remain in the huge reptile's teeth. Plovers aid in cleaning the mouths of their huge crocodilian clients. The brave little bird's actions help to prevent infection from raw meat for the crocodile and to remove insects that crawl atop the crocodile's skin. Therefore, the tiny birds get a free meal and the crocodile gets a free dental checkup and cleaning. Not a bad arrangement. I'm not sure how this symbiotic relationship was originally formed, but I guess the history does. The first plover to walk into the mouth of a crocodile must have been either very brave or very reckless. Alright, that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Who do you think is the best team so far? Let us know down in the comment section. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to your channel. If this is the sort of video that you like to watch, you might also want to check out our other videos. Think you might like that too. Till next time, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.